Raul Esparza is one of Broadway's most talented talents, effortlessly shifting between work in plays and musicals. Right now he's rehearsing for a play, Tom Stoppard's Arcadia, and prepping a solo concert, kind of your cabaret debut. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Up at Lincoln Center. Please American welcome Songbook. to the show, Raul Esparza. How you doing? I'm good. You know, I want to ask you, how much, how much ool do you like in your Raul? <laughs> I like it to be really full. Yeah. Nice. Raul. 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 Roll the R and get the Raul in there. Raul. Well, that, and that stupid Phantom of the Opera character kind of confused. That's Raul. I know. It's annoying. It's French. So, yeah. Thing that's. You are Raul Espasa. Raul. Raul. Espasa. You don't introduce yourself that way, do you? No, I don't. I say, hi, I'm Raul. <laughs> so how's it going? You're pretty busy. Yeah, it's good. I like being busy. I what? like having too much to do. Did you have time? And wait, you've been no, you've been pretty nonstop busy. I saw you in Leap of Faith. Yeah, we finished Leap of Faith, I guess, in LA. Right, right before November. So that was great. And then so you had a couple months off. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, the, well, the holidays they don't really count. Right. And um, what'd you do for the holidays? I actually went to Europe for a bit. Oh, nice. Where? So that was cool. To Paris and London. Got to see some great theater in London, and uh, we got snowed on, and um, then came back and had a reading of a Terence McNally piece that was really beautiful, new thing that he's written. And we started Arcadia and the concert. And how are the rehearsals going for Arcadia? Great. We had Tom Stoppard with us the first week, so that's, to me, it's a dream. And that's why I wanted to do this show. Uh -huh. I just felt like being in a room with him and, and David would just be so damn cool. You've, now, you've worked, you've worked with, on Sondheim, Shakespeare, Pinter, Mamet, Boy George. Boy George. <laughs> and <laughs> go on. So, right, so obviously <laughs> Stoppard was, would be next on. Yeah, whatever. Stoppard's the, you know, and then some Ibsen after that I think we're going to do. I'm... I just, I think he's like the greatest playwright in the English language right now. I really think that what he does, the way his ideas spark, is so theatrical and so exciting. And I know that people get intimidated by his work right. a lot, um, but fundamentally his plays are so much about just human beings trying to relate to each other, falling in love, dealing with whatever they're dealing with. And this play, Arcadia, when it works, it just zings. You're, and you, you obviously get a lot of joy out of very smart, and you, I mean, you were brilliant in The Homecoming as well. Thanks. But you also can do a big, a big musical. Uh, Musicals are hard. Yeah. <laughs> I defy anybody to say that a musical is in any way... Like a big silly musical can be a hell of a lot of work to put together. Oh, they're incredibly hard. I, one of the hardest things I ever to do is Taboo. Yeah. I really, that thing just kicked our ass. Partly because of the process of it, but also just those characters are hard to play. Yeah. And, the, and the demands that you have to make on yourself to do a show, a musical eight times a week. Right. It's one of the hardest things uh, there is to do. You know, I think of Taboo all the time. It's yes. one of those shows that has completely nice. stuck with me. Aww. And I always think, God, I wish it was still, I wish I could see Taboo I right now. I wish it was still running. Yeah, and I don't know if You it, know if what? I hear that from so many people. And I usually laugh it off, but there's so many people that I trust and respect, yeah. or who know theater, who will say that. And we had fans that you wouldn't believe would have enjoyed this piece. Right. There was something to it. I think that uh, George wrote a really great score, and he tapped into something really honest. And he has a way of writing some things down that are very raw about his own life, and mm -hmm. people just related to it really mm -hmm. well. And I think it's some of the best music I've ever had a chance to sing. It's too bad that, that we were savage before we even opened, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is a very risk-taking show for Broadway. It was out there. I mean, that, there's that quartet in the second act, a quartet for five gay men. Like, yeah. who writes that? <laughs> you right. know, it's right. like, oh, you're going to either like this or you're not. You're right. going to go for this show and get what these people are saying or you're going to walk out of the theater. But for the most part, we had diehard fans. People were just coming every night. I used to make a joke about it as the character because there'd be the same people in the front row every night. And they'd be like, weren't you here the night before? And the night before that? And didn't, didn't, right. didn't you understand the show? Like, why do you keep coming back? And they sort of loved it. They became part of the, <laughs> those fans became part of the event of the evening right, for me. Right, It was having these people who were so, so much of what the show was about. Right. You know? I want to make sure we talk about your concert. You're at the Allen Room at Jazz and Lincoln Center yeah. on February 18th. Mm -hmm. Two shows, right? Two shows. And this is uh, Cuban music. You are uh, Cuban. I am Cuban. Well, I'm Cuban-American. My family would, I used to say I'm Cuban all the time, but my family always corrects it. I was born in the States, but everybody else is from from Cuba and the family. So I'm, I'm the gringo because I was born here. And um, it's the one aspect of my life that I have not been able to use professionally in any way. I just don't. And you, you joked about, you know, Raul at the beginning, but I can't tell you how many people would tell me to change my name 
and just be like, well, you don't look like a Raul. Huh, right. When you say Raul Esparza, you expect, you know, some sort of swarthy dude to come in with a mustache and be like, or a hairnet or something. Like, I don't know what it was that people expected, but that right. stereotype of what Latin is, I didn't right. fit it. And, and I always refer back to my own family. My grandmother's a redhead with blue eyes. My mom's blonde with green eyes. And, you know, my dad's got my coloring. But we're all so different. But there's this thing that happens with Hollywood where it's like, well, Latin, that's what Latin looks like. Mm -hmm. And I didn't fit. Mm -hmm. And it sounded like I didn't look like it, and I couldn't get hired for it. And then they'd see my name, and they'd say, well, you're not that, so change your name. And um, I used to very proudly say, you know, Schwarzenegger. You can say Schwarzenegger, you'll be able to say Esparza. And at least on Broadway they can. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, I just, I've played so many different kinds of characters that I never yeah. get to play Latin. Right. Either. So obviously you're celebrating it in your show. To me, it's a joy. I'm going to be doing music that I grew up listening to that my parents sort of played around the house. And Cuban music... It's not Babalu. It's not just. <laughs> it's not no. It's not just. It's not Babalu. This is a, a little bit more authentic, and we've got a really f tremendous band together. I think we've got like eleven, maybe more. I've got backup singers going. Uh, we've got you know a trumpet section. You can't do this stuff by half. So I made it a lot harder for myself for my first time out. Seriously, first time at bat doing one of these solo oh. concerts. I haven't done a solo concert in New York, and I put it off for so long. And when this came up, it seemed like a great opportunity. So. I so grabbed it, it, but I really overcomplicated it by making it Cuban music. And I'm going to do some stuff from shows because okay. I just feel like I have to. I just, I don't want the audience to be sitting there going, what? The whole night. And I also don't want people <laughs> to feel like, I don't know, I go see somebody in concert, I want to see their song. Are you going to do Being Alive as a Roomba? Uh, not on your life. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad call. I could maybe do Ladies Who Lunch as a full Bossa Nova, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> but, you know, I just, I got to do some stuff that I... Yeah. Your mom was raised in Cuba. Is your dad also? My dad, too. They're both raised in Cuba. My mom was raised in Cuba. She left when she was about 14, I think. I want to say, like, 62. I know it was before the missile crisis. My father, on the other hand, um, my grandfather, who's also Raul Esparza, my father's Raul Esparza, uh, my grandfather worked in the sugarcane industry. And he sort of ended up working his way up through the sugarcane industry because people were defecting and leaving. And he defected to the CIA in the later 60s. And my father and my uncle on my, on my, on my dad's side and my grandmother um, escaped secretly. It was quite cinematic. So did, did you hear a lot about Cuba growing up? Did I did from my mom's side of the family, not so much from my dad's. Yeah. I think they stayed longer and there was less to, uh, I, uh, to be nostalgic about. Okay. But I got to understand, growing up in Miami, almost all my friends were Cuban kids. Yeah. We all spoke Spanish. Everybody that went to my high school, our families had gone to the same school or rival schools in Cuba. Uh, it's a really insular world, and you just wanted to be American because all, all you heard was Spanish, and you ate Cuban food and listened to Cuban music, and mm -hmm. that was life. So yeah, you heard about Cuba all the time because right. it was just so much longing to go back, to go home. and. Um, I was just like, please, I just want to listen to American music and be a, an American kid. So this is a chance, this concert is a chance for me to touch base with a huge part of who I really am, to sing in the first language I learned and to sing some of the songs I first heard. And I don't know how it ties together, you know, how a, a Cuban-American actor could end up, you know, starring in Sondheim. It doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. But that's the road that I ended up taking. And, are your parents excited that you're doing this concert? Yeah, yeah. I haven't told them too much about it, so that they'll be, you know, they'll get they'll get into the music and stuff. Do you speak Spanish with your parents? Yeah. Can you answer the next question in Spanish? Okay. I want to hear you speak Spanish. Right. What What is the most Cuban thing about you? Probablemente la comida que me gusta. Translation. Me encanta la comida. Me encanta el lechón asado y la. So well, my accent. <laughs> the translation is probably the food. I love the food. The most Cuban thing about me is that that food makes me crazy. Roast pork, rice and beans, plantains. Where do you like to get it in New York? In New York, there's a couple places. There's a little good place on, uh, I want to say, Cornelia and Bleecker called Little Havana, which I think has like six tables. And she just does really awesome Cuban food. And Victor's isn't bad on 52nd. Mm -hmm. They do some nice right. stuff. I guess their rent is higher, so it's more expensive. <laughs> but there's some really good Cuban food in this city. What about mojitos and cigars? Mojitos and cigars. I wish I could get the real thing, but you can't get yeah. the real cigar. And the mojitos, I, they're too sweet up here. Mojitos should have some kick to it. Yeah. It should taste like fire water. 
and not be such a sugary drink. My dad used to make them at home, so. The real way. The real, the real like, yeah. <laughs> put hair on your balls. Yeah. So you just turned 40 recently. I did. I'm, How'd that go? I'm olden. It was the greatest birthday, and I can't, I was dreading it. Because, not because I was turning 40, it's not like the tick, tick, boom thing. It was just like, oh, it's that number coming up, and we're going to be in Leap of Faith. They moved the dates, and we were doing Leap of Faith. So I thought, oh, I'm not going to get to celebrate my birthday. This is what I thought. And then I get to the theater in L.A., and they've filled the dressing room with, like, balloons and streamers. <laughs> it was like a kid's party. And then backstage, the cast had pinatas and cakes and... At intermission, and then after the show, we uh, we stopped uh, during the curtain call, and Brooke told the audience that it was my birthday, and then like two thousand people sang happy birthday. Wow. I started sobbing, and uh, it was just so incredible. I thought, well, what better experience for an actor? Then we had a closing party, which was my birthday party. We had another cake, and we had another cake. <laughs> we had a party at Brooke's house, and we like danced until uh, until we could breathe. It was great. I haven't had such a big birthday party in a long time. <laughs> so, and I like the number. 39 felt a little wishy-washy, though it was a really awesome year. 40 is very strong. 40 is very like, yeah. Uh, I don't uh, care so much what you have to say. I'll decide. Do you want kids? I do very much. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to have a family. I think it's an important, I think it would be an important aspect of my life. We. I, I was just home, you know, seeing seeing everybody at home, and you, you want to leave something of yourself behind more than that, just to kind of extend the extend the, the values and the and the stories and the I don't know. I have friends now with you know little kids, and I find myself kind of falling in love with their kids and wanting to run away and steal them, and mm -hmm. uh, I, it surprises me, actually, how you think because uh, I don't I still think I'm 16 somewhere inside. So I never feel like I'm quite mature enough for anything that I do. Mm -hmm. So I find, I'm surprised that I keep being drawn to my friend's kids or something. So yeah. You always seem like a pretty uh, serious guy. I mean, you're funny, but you, you also, you have a very sort of serious, too serious thing right? about you. No, so it's I should not come too serious. Next time. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Next time we'll do it drunk. Next time, that'll be a better interview. <laughs> I'm game. With, Q, with <laughs> well, no, mojitos and, and cigars. Every time you say, Rosie O'Donnell, we drink. <laughs> Are you ever really goofy? Is that what it is when you, like, do you let loose? What do you do for fun? What do you like, you know? I read books and I do calculus. I, um, <laughs> yeah, I love to go dancing and I love, you know, you watch movies. I ride the bike, uh, bike on the Hudson. I like to travel. I like, love to go to the beach. And uh, there's a lot to see and do in this city. And I, and I love being out after the show. And we have uh, groups of friends who get together, you know. We started a thing during the homecoming where we would have uh, a group, groups of actors getting together on Saturday nights and eating in different restaurants and stuff. And I think it's, you know, it's, this city's the capital of the world. I love it. I love in, enjoying New York. Yeah. And I'm kind of a goofball, I'm fundamentally. I'm very poised in these situations, right, but right. I'm fundamentally a goofball. Like, if I was an animal, I'd be a penguin, just falling <laughs> off ice, all dressed up and looking like, yo, I'm cool. And then, whoa! Because I will knock over everything in sight. I, I'm just a goof. And, uh, yeah, I go up and down and up and down. <laughs> um, I just said my sense of humor tends to be a little more biting and more like. Right. I like being with really smart people, people who get obscure right. references and stuff right. like that. You right. Know? I don't want to always bring this up because I'm sure you're sick of this, but you've had 420 nominations, mm -hmm. which is really annoying <laughs> because you should have, I would say, two or three Tonys at this point. If only the Broadway.com people who vote. <laughs> you know, for Broadway. the awards, the, awards. the Broadway.com audience, the, the they, awards that they love you, they love me, they love you know, you. and the drama desks. You know what it is with the Tonys? Like, it really has been an amazing thing to be nominated in all those categories. I took it very seriously on company. Um, well, that's the one. I mean, do you have a David Hyde Pierce voodoo doll? No, David's an awesome guy. He was, he's an awesome guy. I mean, I set my dog on him, but we, <laughs> David's just, he's a dude, and it has nothing to do with David. You know, it's nothing to do with David, as though we're in competition with each other. Yeah. You know, I read something online yesterday. It was like, and so and so lost that award. You don't really lose right, that right. award. Um, the company yeah, it'd be nice was to the win. one that, that one bit me, and I, not you. It'd be nice to win. It'd be, you know, that one that year was like I was winning everything, and 
think I won like a sweepstakes. I was winning and winning. And then yeah. you, you get on this treadmill where you think, oh yeah, that's validation. I guess ultimately it isn't. I'm probably never quite get over it, but the truth is the award doesn't make it a better performance. Right. I promise you. Right. I promise you it was still the same great show that it was before we won the best revival, Tony. And the most magical thing that's ever happened in my life on stage happened because of not winning the award the night, that Sunday night. The Tuesday when we came back, uh, I will never forget as long as I live. That audience was unbelievable. They, we finished being alive and they, start, they started clapping and they clapped for like 30 seconds, which is a long time. Mm -hmm. And somebody, I don't know what happened, the whole theater got up on its feet and we had a standing ovation that went on for three minutes after being alive. And we couldn't get through the rest of the show. The cast was, like people couldn't speak their lines. It's the most incredible outpouring of love. Company is one of my three favorite Raul Esparza Raul Espar Raul performances. Raul performances? Because I, I spent time thinking about this. I would say Company, Tick, Tick, Boom, and The Normal Heart. Thank you. What, what, what is your sort of, what's been like, what, if you had to pick, you've had an amazing career. I mean, you've, you've this has been, been able to do a lot of amazing I was writing things. out the bio for the American Songbook and I kind of went, holy shit. I did all this, it's pretty you know, incredible. the theater. Most people don't have the kinds of career that I've been able to have here in the theater where yeah. I can actually pay my bills yeah. acting yeah. <laughs> on stage, you know? Even with the name Raul. Even with the name Raul, right? And I... Um, what, like, turns out is like a, a, a pinnacle for you. Are there any... <sighs> Getting to do Sunday in the Park with George at the Kennedy Center. That was... Yeah. It's like walking on I air. I missed it, which is probably why it's not on my list. Walking on air, man. That was something else. Those two shows, Merrily and, and Sunday. Really just, it was like Sondheim camp. We were all in some crazy fantasy world. Uh, I would say Company is probably my, if there were a performance that I would want everybody to remember me for. And it's on DVD. I know. And which I, is I, awesome. That kind of kills me because I, you know, I watch Sweeney on DVD. I watch In the Woods on DVD. Those shows. Yeah. And Sunday. And then there's, I would say that uh, the two you mentioned, Normal Heart and Tick, Tick, Boom, have been. You agree with me. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Normal Heart, ones. I was so damn proud of. Yeah. And Tick, Tick, Boom changed my life. Most important thing I ever did in New York, I think. I really do. So what's next? Arcadia. Arcadia. Uh, then the concert. And then I'm doing a Stephen Schwartz thing, I think, uh, in, uh, in April. And then we're looking at Leave of Faith. So Leave of Faith is still city. on track. Yeah. Awesome. So we're still on track with that. And uh, hopefully a nice vacation <laughs> sometime in the summer. That'd be a good thing. Yeah. Well, we're all looking forward to Arcadia. Yeah. And now that your two shows at the Island Room are basically sold out. So, so anyone who wants to see it can't. What do you have to do to get a ticket? Um, um, <laughs> what do you, I don't know what you have to do to they, get a they, ticket. They, you they, go, they line, figure it go out. line up. They'll have space. I, if we can have standing room, I would totally love it. And I would love it if, like, if people would come who are mobile and want to dance. You want some dancing. That's a polite way of saying. That's pretty. I'd really love to have an audience that's got some energy. You know, you want some it. Cubans. I want some Cubans in the room <laughs> and uh, and some kids. They right. could be fun. At the American Songbook. At the American series. Songbook. Let's check it up. Let's check it up. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. Oh, I hope to see me. you again soon. Yes. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.